Hey everyone, Livy here, back with another video, and today, oops, sorry, I'm gonna like, I realize this is like shaking. Anyways, today we are going to do something that has been honestly very, 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 very long overdue, but you know, life happens, so I'm doing it now. <laughs> okay, what is it? You might be thinking, well, I don't know how many of you have been on my channel a while, but you might remember that some time ago I had a video where I recommended books to people based on certain tarot decks. Well, this is the same concept. I am recommending today books based on certain tarot decks, but I have all three of them out already for a reason. And that is, <laughs> when I was thinking of the idea for this video, you know, there's a lot of tarot decks I have that do remind me of certain books on my shelf, but I couldn't figure out which three, I at least wanted three decks featured and I wanted it to at least be cohesive, okay? So there are some that I still need to read and like think about before I can talk about those tarot decks and books I would recommend. But when I was thinking of books that reminded me of, I mean, when I was thinking of tarot decks that reminded me of books, I had an interesting thing happen where three different tarot decks were giving me the same book vibes. <laughs> Basically, I kept thinking about the same books that I would recommend for each of these decks. So I decided to combine this into one video where basically, if you are a fan of either the Carrot Tarts Tarot, The Journey Tarot, and I have the misprint version. I should specify that if the colors seem more saturated to you. Uh, Journey Tarot, or if you are a fan of the Dreaming Way Tarot, I'm going to recommend some books that I think that you might like to read. I know, kind of weird. <laughs> there, as you can see, these books, I mean, not these books, these tarot decks, um, have very different vibes, right? They're not completely the same at all. These two have similar color schemes. These, though, are not completely, you know, the same type of uh, style. So why was it, you might say, I kept thinking about certain books to go with these? And I think it has to do with just aesthetics. A lot of it has to do with like the aesthetics I felt while reading the books I'm going to mention. Um, some of it has to do with like topics talked about in the book or in the books in question or fantastical elements that made me think that these decks and books had a similar style. So... We're going to get into it today. I hope you guys like this. I know these are really like, once again, these are very random decks. <laughs> so I don't know. I really don't know how this is going to go. But some of these books that I'm going to recommend, there's four of them. Okay. There's four books today. I would say one of these is definitely more vague than the others. But I feel like all these kind of go. So let me let me just get into them. I'm keeping the decks kind of close by so I can give you some visual examples if I need to. But the first book today that I would recommend if you like any of these decks happens to be... Okay, this one and this first one I will say is the most vague. Like it's been actually a very long time since I've read this. But it gives me the Court of the Air vibes. This is a book by, as it says here, Stephen Hunt. Book I read a while back, but I remember really liking because it has basically steampunk, you know, themes in here. Um, it's fantastical of a world, but they make it seem like it's also London at the same time. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting steampunk world. Um... And it says, he, as it says here, it's two orphans on the run, each with the power to save the world. What I remember of this book is that there was two main characters, Oliver and um, Molly. And they basically both get tangled up for different reasons together because 
she basically is the target of like she 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 was living in an orphanage and then she gets targeted and so everyone else dies it kind of says it here um oliver was you know sheltered most of his life but then he comes across the mysterious court of the air and the reason why i think this is a good book to go with these is that a lot of it's more i guess not no not so much this one but these two decks definitely go with this one because i feel like a lot of the style mentioned in the book since it's steampunk based was very uh victorian very fashion forward like the people that were described um, you would get scenes mentioning things like this, like grandeur and steampunk kind of qualities, but you'd have more of the fashion um, like this. There were parts of the world, that, kind of spoilers, but in the book, there's like a part where they have to leave the big city and you got more landscape visions that looked like this. It was just a very, I don't know. It, there's something about this, even though, oh, see, this is, is especially, I'm going to keep this card out soon to explain the other book that I want to mention, but the steampunk quality that sometimes shows up in the Journey Tarot combined with, like, the fashion and kind of, like, moodiness of this deck make it that the two just seem to vibe to me. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but in my opinion, right? They go pretty well. So this was an interesting book. I think it's technically a part of a series, but not quite. It's like one of those weird ones where this is technically like a first book. By the same time, this is like a standalone. But I really like this one. This was A Court in the Air. It's the only one I've read. Um, but I kept this book around, and it definitely gives me these vibes. But speaking of this card, I'm going to kind of hold it over here because this next deck, this next deck that I'm going to show you, or not deck, sorry, this next book I'm going to show you is actually for if you are a fan of all three of these. And specifically, if I cannot get, oh man, <laughs> ah, this might actually be an important card too, so I'm going to put that to the side here. But if you are a fan of all three of these decks, I think you will like this next book. Which is The Edge Chronicles. This is a middle grade fantasy series by Paul Stewart and Chris Riddle. I love this series, okay? This is one of my favorite book series of all time, especially when I was younger. This was a great one. And you can still get it in some places. It might be more in like used bookstores, but the authors are from the UK. And what can I say about the Edge Chronicles? This book is fantastical. It is set in a different world. Um, it starts the series off with this character, Twig, who as a baby and growing up, he thought he was like the weird troll out living in this like, um, it's like they're a very specific type of troll. I forget what the book mentions, but um, he lives with those trolls. And it turns out one day that his adopted mom, because he finds out he's adopted, uh, found him one day. But he has a life out somewhere and he's not actually a troll like them. So he needs to venture off and go into the world and make his own way. And there's a lot of things that happen in the series. There's other characters that become involved um, I don't want to spoil too much, but let me just mention some things. First off, this is the beautiful map that's in this book. Uh, beautiful, right? Beautiful. The Chris Riddle's drawings are otherworldly. And what does it first make you remind you of? Hmm. Gee, I wonder, right? <laughs> so aesthetically, this book is like the Carrot Tarts Tarot, right? Even the creatures involved are very much like this design. Uh, I mean, like, look at some of these, you know? Even the fashion, like, I was going to say, some of this is like the fashion, the floating ships, you know, like the journey tarot. There's a lot of things about this book that I was like, wow, this is like really familiar. Um, 
And so <laughs> I kept thinking about it. Like aesthetically, 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 it goes with all three of these decks. So that's the first thing. Why do I think people would like the Edge Chronicles? Aesthetically, if you like all of these things, you should be reading the Edge Chronicles. But also just because, you know, there's a lot of like fantastical elements in this. And it's just, I don't know. It's it's otherworldly. All three of these decks, well, these two more so than this one, but they're all very fantastical. But this book also is very fantastical, and it goes with the vibe and the stories and just the interesting characters and bits that are in here. You definitely feel it with the Edge Chronicles. So I would say that you can't go wrong with this series, okay? You really can't. And if you like any of these decks, I do recommend that you find this series, if you can, at a local library, in a bookshop, whatever it is, The Edge Chronicles. It is fantastic, okay? Fantastic. And also ties in with another book that I'm going to show, especially in relation to like these cards and stuff. So let's get into that. Another book that I would recommend if you are a fan of and all three of these decks is A Winter's Promise. And this is a book that's actually translated from French, but it is by Christelle Dabol. I don't know if you would pronounce this Dabos. Probably not because it's French. So maybe it's like Dabol. Dabo. I don't know. I don't know how you would pronounce that. Dabois. Someone who's French, please tell me. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that The Mirror Visitor is a series of like, I think it's five, five or three books. No, four, sorry, four books. And this is the first one. This is A Winter's Promise. I have talked about this book on this on my channel before. Well, I've talked about the series on my channel before because I recently read the last book in this series. But A Winter's Promise is such a fascinating book. Basically, it is about a girl. Well, okay, she's not technically, I don't know. It's kind of confusing because when you read the book, she doesn't feel like a young girl. She feels like she's maybe college age, so it's kind of weird. But anyways, her name is Ophelia, and she lives in a secondary world where everyone basically comes from... These beings, um, these like godlike beings, and they each live on their own little, they're not like quite planets, but they're like arcs. They call them arcs. It's basically like this, okay? It's like a giant, big, floating ball, and each of them has their own like land like this, and each arc has different people who have different magical abilities. Um, specifically, Ophelia, our main character, ha it has two gifts, right, too. She can read objects by um, touching them. Like, she knows their whole life and memories and stories and such. And she can get that from them. And then her other ability is that she is able to go through mirrors. And basically what happens to Ophelia in this first book is that... She's become of age and her family decides that in order for things to keep going smoothly for them and for her, they want to basically marry her off to somebody from a different arc. And she's not really happy about this, but she decides to go on that journey to meet this person. Um, Thorn ends up being his name. And there's a lot of adventures and such that happens from the book. So as you can see, just from the aesthetics, this is pretty much close to the Edge Chronicles in appearance wise. So that's why obviously this reminds me of the Caratards Tarot. But it also, when you're reading the book, it also has vibes closer to this. And the aesthetics of what people are wearing is definitely closer to this. Like it's described in the book that people have a fashion sense that's, it's really funny how similar it is here to the Dreaming Way Tarot like aesthetics. So again, aesthetics of this, the fantastical elements of these two decks, this book has it. Okay. Now there is some things I do want to say. I do like this series and I do think it's very fascinating, but 
if you're going into the series like I originally did, uh, thinking that this was going to be a romance with a happy ending, I am sorry to tell you that that is very, very, very wrong. <laughs> um, if you're going in with those expectations, you will be disappointed if you try to go through all the books in the series. But if you go into this just thinking that like, oh, this is an adventure story, I'm going to see what happens. Um, and then also the bigger world elements that start happening as the book series goes on, like especially questions around like the idea of religion and like God and how you exist in this world. Um, if you're ready for that kind of metaphysical <laughs> stuff, then yes, read this. But if you go into the thinking this is a romance like I did, that on that end, I think you'll be disappointed because in my opinion, if a book is going to be an actual romance, it needs to have a happy ending. And if it does not have that for the main romantic couple, it's not really that. So this is fantasy. I would not necessarily say it's a romance, but it is a really fun and interesting story. And the last book I'm going to mention for this video and why I think you should read this is that this book was actually inspired by a different book entirely. And this next book that I'm going to show is actually very, 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 very familiar for a lot of people. And that book is Howl's Moving Castle. Yes, this book. I also recommend that you read Howl's Moving Castle if you like the Dreaming Way Tarot, the Journey Tarot, and the Carrot Tarts Tarot. Because the Mirror Visitor book series that I just showed specifically like this first one too, a winter's promise the the author has said that she was inspired by Howl's Moving Castle and this book I have to say is fantastic if you have never oops sorry I different book dropped on the floor um if you have never read Howl's Moving Castle this is your sign and this is your time that you should read this book, especially if you like these decks, because aesthetically, same style, same world, same ridiculous like fashion senses, same like interesting creatures and other bits that are in the world are in Howl's Moving Castle. Um, even some of the like scenes, like things like this, or even just like interesting scenes like this, this is all basically in Howl's Moving Castle, okay? And I highly recommend this book too because if you like, okay, if you were like me, I first actually watched a movie by Hayao Miyazaki, you know, Studio Ghibli, Howl's Moving Castle. I love that movie. It's still my favorite. But I do like the book a lot, even though the book is different in a couple of key aspects from the movie. That's all I kind of want to say because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone. But I do think that Howl's Moving Castle, the book, is just as good as the movie. Even though, again, like more towards the ending of these two books, they're very different from each other. Um, but for those who don't know anything about Howl's Moving Castle, this is the story of Sophie. And Sophie basically is not, how do we put this? She thinks she's very plain and she thinks she's very boring. And her life, all her life, she's basically been pushed to the side and told that, hey, you're just going to work in this flower shop, okay? Oh, not flower shop, sorry, um, hat shop. And you're going to work there and you're going to have to be fine with it. And that's all she thought her life was going to be, right? That her whole life she was just going to be stuck in a hat shop making hats. But then one day she gets cursed by a witch that comes into her shop. Unbeknownst to her, it was a witch. She kind of treats her wrongly. So the witch goes, well, you know what? Then time to make you pay. And she basically makes it so that Sophie looks like an old woman, even though she is not. So she escapes from home. She decides she needs to be on the run um, and she leaves. So when she does, she ends up meeting Howell and Howell's moving castle. And Howell also has like a curse of sorts placed on him. He's trying to get his heart back. But he, in the meantime, he ha is employed and has to do all kinds of deeds um, 
around the world and such. So still pretty much the same plot. There is some interesting things in here. I don't want to spoil, but there are deviations, especially with things that connect actually to our world. But I was also incredibly surprised, like happy surprised when I found out that this book is actually hilarious. I was reading parts of it like while I was at work. And there was this one scene in particular that's not in the movie, but I had, I read it with this and it was so funny. I was actually laughing out loud and that doesn't happen too often with, with me, like reading books, but I was like literally like laughing from this book. So this one is a great one and I don't think you can really go wrong. I, I don't really. So with that said... Oh, and by the way, this is another card that reminded me of, um, literally verbatim reminds me of this book, but again, sorry. Tarot. Tarot does a funny thing where sometimes aesthetics, visuals that people pull from their brain somehow combine, right? They combine and they make it possible for people to make these connections between other types of media, I guess. Well, I wouldn't say that tarot is necessarily media, but you know what I mean. It's just so interesting how these books seemed to connect with these different tarot decks. And so I'm just grateful that I... I to show these off on my channel today, but also to tell you that, hey, maybe you should read these if you like these other ones. So, yeah, that was my stick. <laughs> it's been a while. Can you tell it's been a while since I filmed? <laughs> At the time me filming this, can you tell it's been a while since I filmed? Yes, probably. But as you can see, a lot of these decks were chosen because they fit the aesthetics of these books. It's a weird, interesting intersection, but I think it's really fascinating and I think it's really fun. And I think that people will honestly enjoy these books as much as I did if you like these decks. So if you do, um, find these next time. But for now, I'm going to head out. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Maybe with some more book recommendations, maybe. I don't know. I think I have to get some other videos out first, but yeah, we'll see. But for now, this is it. Bye.